What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Bible Bites, where we are reading the Bible 10 minutes at a time, and we're just asking questions, and we're going on this truth-seeking journey together. And so I'm reading out of the ESV Study Bible, but before we dive in, my name is Lauren Wilson. I'm an Arizona School of Ministry student. I'll be done with my schooling at the end of 2024, and I just want to have constructive conversations, and I want to create an environment where people can come together and go after truth together and try to maximize what Galatians 5, 22 through 25 refers to as the fruit of life, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, because I truly believe that no matter what your background is or what your worldview is, that that definition of human flourishing, seeking out the fruit of life, I feel that, that that's a worthy aim. And we're all on a different part of our journey, and I want you to feel that you can belong before you believe, and maybe you don't even ever believe in this, but I want you to to wrestle with it. Don't take my word for it. Don't take someone else's word for it. Study other philosophies. Study other religions. Study the Christian Bible. Try to put into practice through your own experiences. See what what actually works and what actually makes sense. Because at the end of the day, as Christians, a couple thoughts one, we're not here to judge. We're here to love God, and we're here to love others, and we're here to serve and to do our best of spreading that message to all corners of the earth and the saving salvation of Jesus Christ. But we ourselves have to wrestle with what that even means on an individual level as well. And then second, I always believe that as as Christians that if we truly believe that Jesus is the truth, then as long as we are facilitating and encouraging and empowering people to seek truth, then eventually they'll end up there. And so there's no point in trying to force a belief system on someone because if you can force a belief system on someone, that means someone else can force a belief system on them too. So we should be encouraging individual pursuit of truth and I don't want to talk too much or ramble too much so let's go ahead and start our 10 minutes once again thank you so much for joining we're at Matthew 2 1 this is the ESV study Bible so here we go now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king behold wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying where is he who has been born king of the Jews for we saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. And so this is the second time in Matthew that it is written by the prophet. The, the first one was what the Lord had spoken was Matthew one twenty three. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And so this is the second prophecy fulfilled and and so the old testament was written by multiple different authors across multiple different countries and then they were curated and put together into the old testament canon and within that there was a bunch of prophecies that a messiah would come and save god's people and and fulfill the covenant that god made with the first patriarch of Abraham. And so the Messiah had to fulfill every single prophecy to be legitimate. And there was a lot of people 
in this time period that had claimed to be the Messiah. They were false messiahs. And so that's the context of this. And so we continue on. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return Harad, they departed to their own country by another way. Matthew 2.13, The Flight to Egypt Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Harad is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. And so that's the third time that in Matthew it says what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. So another prophecy fulfilled. Matthew 2.16, Herod kills the children. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. The return to Nazareth. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that, Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod. He was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. And so that's the fifth mention of a prophet. And so Joseph here has had multiple dreams with angels and the Holy Spirit and the Lord showing him visions. And so a thought on this, that's not too far of a fetch. There's multiple scriptures that says God the Father is a spirit. Jesus is the embodiment of that perfect spirit for us to emulate. And the Holy Spirit is in us to facilitate the relationship of Jesus sacrificing himself and suffering for us to reconcile and have a relationship with God. And there's been thoughts put out there by different theologians, scholars. What is our conscience and what is our intuition and what is the neuroscience backing behind streams of conscience and intuition and how does the imagination work to manifest reality, everything we see, the technology, the computers, the phones, the tables, everything we see at one point was just in someone's imagination, and they had the courage to act on it. So two things. One, where is that source of imagination, and how can something that's not conscience produce consciousness and produce conscious imagination and conscious thoughts. Whatever created this had to have some sort of creative mechanism for us 
to have a creative mechanism. The recipe needed to be there, and I've never seen something unconscious produce something conscious. I've never seen something without thought be able to produce something that has thought. So there has to be some sort of greater creative mechanism that formed us that has consciousness, that has thoughts, and has an imagination of some kind. And then the second part is what is inside of us, in our side of our conscious, in our intuition, that we decide what to act upon. And that's through a series of a value hierarchy in a way because by definition, you decide to do something rationally because that's the most important valuable thing you could do in a limited information and a limited action situation because you can only do so much and you can only act on so much information so you have to organize it and then act upon it and so how does that occur as well and so some people have put forth that the conscious morality and intuition lives in our hearts and scripture actually says that as well when we get to romans those that have never heard the gospel those that have never had the opportunity of reading the text it says that they have morality written on their hearts which is interesting and so we're gonna go ahead and continue forward, but I want I, I've been thinking about that. I've been wrestling with that, and I want to know what what y'all think. What is conscious? What is that little voice inside our head? How do we decipher what is good and what is bad? How does imagination work? And then how do we decide on which thoughts to act upon and which thoughts to go? And when we fall short of some standard that we hold ourselves to, our conscious tells us as much. And we feel some sort of guilt. Why is that? It's just something to think about. I, I believe that it's God and the Holy Spirit and his moral law written on our heart. However, again, I could be wrong. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And so... Where this is actually a good place to stop. That was Matthew 2. We made it all the way through. Next time on Bible Bites, hopefully another episode this week, we'll move on to Matthew 3. So once again, my name is Lauren Wilson. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Energy and time in this earthly realm, most valuable resources. You can always work. You can always make more money. But to give someone your energy and your time, I'm so grateful for it. If you found some value in this episode, if you're finding some value here, please tell a friend about this channel. Please hit subscribe or please leave a comment. It will really help to get the word out and it will really help, I believe, bring some positivity to the world of encouraging each other to go after truth and to have conversations about it again to maximize the fruit of life for as many people as possible. I love y'all. And then another thing, just real quick. Real quick prayer. Anyone who's watching this that is anxious, that is wrestling with depression, is wrestling with self-worth, just know that these stories, there's really, there's power in these stories, whether you're ready to believe every single word of it, whether you're ready to believe that Jesus Christ is fully God and is your Lord and your Savior, we know that there is nothing more potent for helping people overcome anxiety, depression, addiction. Alcoholics Anonymous is all based on replacing the addiction to alcohol with God. And so what is it about breaking strongholds? Because you don't break a stronghold or break an addiction. You replace it with something else. And we know that religion 
is one of the most potent antidotes to breaking these strongholds and these addictions. So what is that about? Why? Why is it not work? Why is it not drugs? Why is it not money? Why is it an all-powerful creator that judges us but also loves us? That that's the most potent antidote. Just something to think about and wrestle with. Because I'm, I'm asking myself that. Because it's like, okay, strip away the theology. Strip it all away. Why? The, why would that? How? Unless, there was, unless it was real. That's about as real as something gets for me. It's like, okay, I was, I was in prison. I was going down this certain path. But this got me out. And you hear that again and again and again and again and again. So what is that? I don't think it's intellectually mature to say it's just a fairy tale, to say it's just Santa Claus, because those the stories of the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus don't act on that real of a level with such serious things. Talking about drug addictions. Talking about people that have committed heinous crimes. We've talked about people with failed suicide attempts. Just something to to think about. All right. I love y'all.